Hi, and welcome to Renaissance Music. We're going to look at secular music, sacred music, the instruments, and its features. So Renaissance music is the era from 1450 to about 1600. Renaissance actually means rebirth. People of this time were interested in ancient Greece and Rome. There were many voyages of discovery and scientific advances also at this time. There are many composers of this period, but um, the ones with the asterisks are the ones who are most famous. People like Talis, Bird, Morley, Palestrina, Gabriella and Monteverdi. The reason, and sorry, Downland as well. The reason is mainly because their manuscripts have survived over time and there's actually a record of these people and their actual music. So church music firstly. Church music was basically um, a style of the Renaissance um, that was certainly highly developed and was more about polyphony, um, counterpoint and contrapuntal is another words that are using for those. And it means moving in more than one part. Homophonic means moving in chords and monophonic means one melodic line. Church music was um, has certainly survived also because people in the church actually could afford to pay people or composers to make the music for their masses, for their funerals and all those sorts of other big events because, as I said, they had the money. And if it wasn't them, it was also um, people who were um, trying to buy things for the church, meaning um, nobility, kings and queens and um, courtiers. They were trying to obviously buy their way into heaven and by paying, um, being patrons for composers so they could actually, as I said, pay their way into heaven by um, getting the music composed for them. Choral polyphony was intended to be a sung a cappella, which means without instruments. So a choral piece um, with lots of different parts, lots of polyphonic, lots of um, melodies was intended to be sung without actual instruments. And the main forms were the mass and the motet. They had four parts based on modes, which is a type of scale, but composers gradually added more accidentals, which are your black and white notes that we um, use on the piano. One of the most noticeable differences between medieval and renaissance styles is that the, of music texture. Whereas a medieval composer tended to contrast the separate strands of his music, a renaissance composer aimed to blend them together. Instead of building up the texture layer by layer, he worked gradually through the piece, attending to all parts simultaneously. simultaneously. The key device used to weave this kind of texture is called imitation. Composers were becoming more, more interested in, and aware of harmony. In other words, they were more interested about how the notes actually fitted together against each other. Secular music, on the other hand, was music independent of churches. So it was music basically um, that was made for fun. The main type of the song was the lead, which is um, word, a German word for song, a frittala, which is the Italian word, chans chanson, which is French, the madrigal, which is Italian, and that word from Spain. And here's a little example for you to actually have a listen to. Contrast, Elizabethan madrigals um, were things that were also um, a song that was very popular in the era. In 1588, a collection of Italian madrigals with English words was published in England and it sparked off an interest in, in, in English madrigal writing. They were performed in rich people's homes. So you can imagine that back then they obviously didn't have um, stereo systems or radios or anything else to listen to. So the only way they could actually um, hear music is if people actually performed them in their home when they had a lovely dinner party and all those sorts of lovely things. And, and here, is an example of an English magical.
There are three types of madrigals. The madrigal proper, this kind was through composed, which is music with no repeating sections. There is a lot of word painting music that illustrates the words. For example, in Thomas Wilkes' A Vesta from um, Latmos Hill Descending, actually had when they were talking about going down the hill, the words, um, the melody was actually descending scale. There's also the ballad. It was sometimes danced as well as sung. The texture is mainly chordal, so homophonic, whereas a madrigal proper is through composed, a ballad is strophic, which has two or more verses set to the same music. The most notable, noticeable feature of a ballad is the fa-la-la-la-la refrain. And if you think of the song, The Christmas Carol, um, deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa-la-la-la-la-la-la-la, that's a type of madrigal or ballad. And the other one was the air. An air could be performed in a variety of ways, by solo voice with lute accompaniment, by a solo voice with accompaniment, for example, viols, which is a relative of the violin, and all parts or all parts sung by the voices, which is with or without instruments. Instrumental music. Until the beginning of the 16th century, instruments were considered to be less important than the voices. They were used for dances and to accompany vocal music, but here they only doubled the voices so they obviously just played the melody line whatever the voice sang that's what the actual instrument sang because the most important thing was the actual voice and not the instrument during the 16th century however composers took a greater interest in writing music for instruments a lot of these instruments were intended for outside use and mainly for secular use the lute so during the Renaissance, the lute held the highest respect of all musical instruments. The repertoire for this courtly instrument is vast. Delicacy, expressiveness and nuance of performance were made possible when the use of a plectrum to pluck the strings was replaced by the use of the fingers. The lute was an ideal accompaniment for voice and other soft instruments and the most eloquent of all solo instruments. In paintings and other artworks, the lute is often associated with Apollo, angels or Orpheus and is often mentioned at climactic points in tragedies and here's an example of what the lute sounds like it is a relative of the guitar um, just often they had different um, numbers of strings depending on who actually made them <laughs> The viol, as you can see, it looks like a violin, but unlike a violin which has four strings, the viol has six strings and it's also a fretted instrument, like the guitar. It was usually played while um, held downwards, like you would see the modern day uh, cello or double bass. It was a quiet instrument with a distinctive nasal tone and there were five different sizes from a treble through to a bass. They were a very popular instrument because they were actually quite portable and it was obviously later replaced by the violin. It's very hard to get a recording of that, so you'll just have to trust me on what it sounds like. Another instrument from the era was the crumb horn. Its name means curved horn. And here's an example of what it sounds like. <laughs> It's a double reed instrument, like a bassoon or an oboe. It has a finger system which is very similar to the modern day clarinet, but the clarinet wasn't invented yet. And the player's lips didn't actually touch the reed. The reeds um, are encased in the actual mouthpiece. There were several different sizes with obviously different ranges. The longer or the bigger the instrument, the lower the sound. The smaller the instrument, the higher the sound. The next one is the racket. It's a very cleverly designed little instrument. You can see here it's actually quite short, but it actually had a very, very low sound. So despite the size, it has a very deep sounding pitch like that of a bassoon. The instrument is very soft sounding and it has internal drilling, which enables the low pitches to sound. And another name for it actually was the sausage bassoon. And sorry, I don't have a, um, an example of what that sounds like. Another instrument from the era was the sackbutt. Now the sackbutt is actually the modern day relative of the trombone, as you can see in the picture there. It was invented for outdoor music because of its naturally loud sound, um, volume 
and the design hasn't changed much over time. Only the size of the mouthpiece, the bell and the tuning and um, the tuning slide have actually changed. But here's an example of what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, another one from the era is the trumpet. It was used for royalty and fanfares. It was um, several different sizes and the reason was it didn't have valves. As it says there, no valves. The sounds are played um, like a modern day bugle. And again, I don't have an example of that one, I'm sorry. Now the next thing is the English consort. Now a consort is a group of instruments playing together. A whole consort consists of instruments all from the same family, but a broken consort has instruments from more than one family. And here's an actual recorder cons consort. Okay, the next thing is variations in ground bass. A ground is a tune repeated over and over in the bass line with the musical material changing above. In other words, it's an ostinato. And this is what it sounds like an example of one. Listen for the bass line. there it actually has lots of changing parts the variations are alterations in the tune and you can of course do variations on the actual bass there are melodic ostinatos or even a melodic bass ostinato the Elizabethan keyboard music a popular instrument was the virginal and a famous collection was the Fitzwilliam virginal book which contained over 300 pieces for the virginal and this is what a virginal actually sounded like similar to a harpsichord And I think you get the idea. A lot of the music was pr programmatic, in other words it told a story and is descriptive. In other words, The King's Hunt by John Bull. The main characteristics of re Renaissance music to summarise are the music is still based on modes but gradually more accidentals creep in over time. It has a richer texture in four or more parts. The bass part is added below the tenor part. There was blending rather than contrasting strands in the musical texture. Harmony was, um, had a greater concern with the flow and progression of chords. And church music, some pieces were intended for a cappella performance, which meant unaccompanied, mainly contrapuntal, lots of imitation. Some church music was accompanied by instruments, for example, polychoral pieces in antiphonal style. And antiphonal is just the ch um, a church version of call and response. And then there was secular music which is non-religious music. Sacred music is to do with the church. There was lots of vocal pieces and dances and lots of instrumental pieces. However, a lot of the instrumentals were in vocal style, but some were suited to instruments. Vocal music was by far the more important of this era. And the characteristic timbres or tone colours of Renaissance musical instruments, many went on to form families that we know of today in modern day music. And that's the end.